Morning, everybody. This is Pastor Paul. I want to share with you a word from the Lord today. We've been in a series called Thrive, Finding God's Way in Difficult Times. And as a church, we've been going through in our small groups this book called Unshakable, Standing Strong When Things Go Wrong. I want to encourage you, if you have not yet done so, to get connected to a small group. Simply go on our website um, at www.bvlifechurch.me, hit connect, get into a small group, and you're able to dive into the word and be able to navigate this season of our life. I believe the Lord has a special word for someone today, and I want to speak to the heart that is going through this season of feeling kind of lost. I want to go through the heart that is wondering what to do next. You're in this season of your life where you're almost uncertain as to your next step and you need direction in your life and direction from the Lord. There are many times in our journey that we, we go through these seasons where we feel like we've had to hit a wall or we have this experience of, ah, I'm not sure. I'm reminded of a, a young man in the scriptures who had a dream of, of doing some big things, of having prominence and significance. And in that journey to the dream, he would meet some obstacles and for him, one of them was he hit into the wall of his relationships. His family and some of his brothers just did not like him. And I know for, for us many times that we hit these moments in our life where the relationships that we expect to move us along actually comes against us. And maybe today you're in that boat where you're feeling caught in a, in a relationship with your family, with loved ones, that you're hoping they would get you towards your dream but actually it's turning out that they're creating an obstacle and you're frustrated and bothered. In that same story of the guy in the Bible, <clears throat> the Bible speaks of when he would journey on and he would achieve great things. He would um, accomplish things because he was skilled, he was bright, and he was being promoted and he thought, hey, I'm on the right track. And maybe that's where you were and then something came along and interrupted that whether it be something that you failed in or someone attacked you unfairly in, but it knocked you off your, your trajectory, it knocked you off your path towards success. And you're in this moment when you're like, okay, what do I do now? You're, you're feeling stuck in a, in a rut, like, ah, I was going where I wanted to go, and then this thing happened, or this person happened, or this circumstance happened, and it knocked you off, and you're wondering, what do I do next? And you need direction as to how to navigate this. The same guy I was talking about in the Bible, he got to a situation where he was, he was stuck and imprisoned and he was locked into a, into a space and a place that one, he didn't belong, that two, he didn't want to be there and he felt he was put there unfairly. And while there, he was just again in this dismay as to is my purpose in life being accomplished? Will the dream that I have ever really happen? And he was lost in that moment and again, desperate for direction, desperate to know what God's will was for his life and how it's going to all pan out. And maybe you're in one of those kind of scenarios like, like Joseph was, where you had dreams and ambitions and hopes and desires, but some things just kind of got in the way. Relationships have hindered you instead of helped you. I remember speaking to different persons and one person said to me, hey, one of the things that hindered them was they hoped that their family would have helped them to go to college and, and make it through, but instead it did not work out. And they've kind of like resigned that they cannot fulfill their dream. Maybe you've been set up in a, in a difficult situation, whether it be something you got tripped up in and you fell, or maybe something where you were going along nicely and then somebody has kind of attacked you and just messed things up. And then you think, you know what? Uh, I'll never. God has a word for you today. Maybe you're that person who you're stuck in a space, a place, a situation, and you wonder, when will this ever change? When will I get out of this? God has a word for you today as well. Because God's desire is to direct you and to speak into your life and to move you towards his purpose for your life. You see, you weren't born by accident. It doesn't matter what anybody else told you. The reality is that before you were born, God knew you. 
before you actually came out into the world. He himself directed and set you apart for his purpose. In Jeremiah 1 verse 4, he tells the prophet, Hey, I set you apart. And God has set you apart because he has a special purpose for every single one of us. There is nothing in creation that is without purpose, without design. And God, the great designer, has designed you and purposed you. And this dream that you've had, this thing that you've committed to the Lord that seemed to be in a halt today, God has a word for you to let you know how to, to move into his purpose wherever you are now. I'm going to read for us an opening scripture and then pray um, for you this morning. It is in Psalm 32. I'm going to read to you from verse 8 and 9. Psalm 32, it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. I like the way the, the Passion Translation states it. He says in verse 8 and 9, I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing and guiding you along the pathway of your life. I will advise you and counsel you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. Let me pray for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that for the person hearing this word, that God, you would speak into them, that they would know today that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, and that God, you would direct their pathway. Father, I pray this day that they would trust in you with all their heart and not lean on their own understanding or intellect, and by acknowledging you, God, that you would make their pathway straight, that you would direct the ways there to go. And Father, for those hearts that are desperate for direction, desperate, Lord God, to know the steps there to take. I just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they would hear your voice ever so clearly and they would step into their purpose and not be sidetracked or lost or without hope. And so do it today, God, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And so I want to take you back to that text where God promises in the psalm, he says, I will instruct you and I will teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. But then he gives a warning in verse 9. He says, do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with a bit and a bridle, or it will not stay near you. You see, again, the Passion Translation says it like this. It says, don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn. When I take you where you have not been before, don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. And so the very first thing I want to share with you is as God wants to give you direction in your life today and to move you towards your purpose and his destiny for you, the caution is that when he's leading you, don't be like a horse or a mule that has to be dragged and pulled and nudged and baited. Instead, today, I want to give you principles from the scriptures in how you can prepare your heart to not be like those stubborn animals, but instead step into God's direction, go where he has for you, and then for you to fulfill the dream, the purpose, the desire God has for you today. And so I want to share with you three things that we are to consider, three things that I'd ask you to, to realize that when God wants to lead you, what we're to do. So number one, it's very simple. Actively choose to listen to the voice of God. One of the biggest challenges people have today, believers have today, pastors have today. I mean, one of the biggest issues people have is this. What is God saying? Have you ever been there? I mean, it, uh, I'm not sure. Is God leading me here? And you get into this quandary as to the direction. You know God wants to lead you. You know the Bible says very clearly, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask of God, and he will pass it on to you without favoritism, and therefore he will direct you. He will give you what you need. But yet there is this issue of trying to discern the voice of God, trying to understand God. What are you saying? And I want to share with you how you can hear the voice of God and how you can be set up to listen to the voice of God because God wants to speak to you. And here is a message and the word for you today. In Isaiah 30 verse 21, it says, You will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, 
follow it, whether it turns to the right or to the left. Do you hear that? God is saying to you that when you're at the crossroads, you would hear a voice saying to you, this is the way to go. And now you can follow him. You're like, no way. I've been wanting to hear God's voice, but I don't know how to do it. I'm going to give you four quick things and help you to line yourself up with the voice of God that you can discern it in your everyday life and for these major moments when you have to make a decision for him. Because God really wants to guide you and he really wants to lead you. And you and I have to tune our ears to hear him. It's like right now, wherever you are, there are so many things in the airways on your, on your phone. There are so many things, but you can tap into the right thing by just clicking a button, searching over. You can switch from Netflix to Hulu. You can switch from YouTube to Facebook. You can, because what? You are tuning in to a source. And in the same way, you've got to do some things to, to tune in to the voice of God that you can hear him clearly and not miss him. You can't expect to, to watch Netflix by turning on Hulu. It doesn't work. You can't expect to hear the voice of God when you're tuned into something else. And we are going to need to tune that thing into the voice of God that you can hear him very clearly. So here are the quick things. Number one, it is the scriptures. The first issue, the first practice, the first thing you have to do to be able to discern God's voice for you to actively listen to him is to be actively engaged in the Bible. The Bible gives to us the written record of the Word of God. It gives to us the principles, teachings, and the wisdom of God through the ages. Written over 1,500 years. I mean, literally written, I mean, it is over time God has gathered for you and for me. This is like a gift from heaven, the Bible, the Word of God. That you and I can tap into the experiences of others during, their, during history and understand how God speaks to people and how he has led them and hear his prophetic voice saying, this is his will for you and me. If you want to know the will of God for your life, the first thing to do is to tap into that which is already written that you can understand his general purpose and understanding for you. If you're going to discern God's voice, you've got to know that the Bible says, forgive, and you're saying God's will for me is to do something that takes you out of that, then you know that you're going to miss God's voice. But instead, obey what is written Step into it and follow his truth. You see, that's the first, I'd call, level guidance that you and I have to first understand what the scripture says because it teaches us literally how to grow. Now, the Bible says very clearly in Timothy that all scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for teaching, which means to, to give you understanding and to explain to you God's will and his purpose. It's also profitable for rebuking, which means... God's word is there to point out what's wrong. So if you're going on a certain pathway, what God's word does for you is say, oh, that way is not right, dude. Wake up, turn around. And therefore, it is profitable for teaching. Therefore, it's going to instruct you and explain to you what God's will is. And it's also profitable for rebuking, which is saying, stop, don't do that. But it also says that God's word is not only profitable for teaching and rebuking, but it's also for correcting. So if rebuking is pointing out what's wrong, correcting is showing you what's right. And so therefore, God's word for you and for me is to not only explain to you God's will, but also to show you what's wrong. And so when I approach a Bible, we, we teach our guys how to read the Bible devotionally using that scripture. So the first thing you do is when you open the text, um, you, you ask the question of the Holy Spirit and for yourself. You say, okay, what am I learning in, from this text that's new information, new insight, new principles or precepts that I can follow? That's the teaching part. Then the next thing you ask when you're reading the scripture is ask this question. Okay, God, what am I learning from this text that's showing me what's wrong in my motives, my thinking, or my behavior? And then you have this interaction with the Holy Spirit while you're reading the text. Okay, Holy Ghost, show me. Is there anything wrong with, are you rebuked? Go ahead, God, show it to me. And then when it comes to the correcting part, you ask that same question in a different way. You say, okay, Holy Ghost, show me the right way now to think, to believe, to hope, to be motivated. And as you start doing that and diving into the text, can I tell you, 
the Bible will never be boring for you. I remember when I was growing up, it'd be like, okay, we're reading. It's just kind of like, la, la, la. And there are times you'd read and he's like, I'm not getting anything out of it. But once I learned the purpose of the scriptures, that is for teaching, giving me new insight and perspectives and principles. When I read now, I start looking for that. And then it says, it's for rebuking. So when I'm reading now, I'm like, okay, Holy Ghost, show me what's wrong. And it's for correcting. So I'm like, okay, Lord, show me what's right. And it's also for training or equipping the man and the woman of God that we can be thoroughly prepared for every good work, which means, okay, God, tell me what to do from your word. And I'm going to practice how you have taught me in your scriptures. When we approach the Bible that way, in that devotional interaction with God saying, okay, Holy Ghost, on you know, like unravel this thing, open up their word to me. Can I tell you, you're going to get more direction from God than you've ever gotten before. I would encourage you not only read a text to say, well, get that little inspiration for the day. Don't just read it. Well, it's a duty. Let me read one, see what it says. But instead, read it according to the purpose of the scriptures that God will teach you and explain to you his right way of living and his precepts and his and all about his nature and character. And God will show it to you. When you read the text, open your soul to be rebuked. You're like, what? I don't want to be. Well, then you'd miss the guidance. It is a fool who would say, well, I will take no advice or correction or rebuking because I'm going to find my own way. And then you fall off the cliff. But instead, when you approach a text, do it that way. So to actively listen to God, it means checking into the word concerning what God says. And then you'll be able to find his will for your life. The second thing that helps you to actively listen to God is to get godly counsel. The Bible says, in the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. And therefore, you've got to get counsel, not the kind of counsel that's going to try to affirm what you want to do anyway, but you want to get counsel that would give you feedback from biblical principles that are people who are wise in that area that you're seeking counsel. So for example, I remember years ago, I had a major decision to make. I was trying to discern concerning my career. At that time, I was pretty young, I was like 23 years old. I had just gotten promoted to be the head of, this, of our department in marketing and distribution. And therefore, I was like, woo, this felt like, wow. And there was a track that thought that this was gonna be great. But yet internally, I was having these these desires and ambitions where I wanted to go into ministry and I wanted to serve the Lord fully. And therefore, I was trying to seek the Lord for counsel. My wife was in school at the time. She was in medical school, which was expensive. And there was the moment of trying to decide how to go. So I started to pray and actively listen to God. And the first thing I did was check the scriptures. And as the Bible was outlined there concerning God's will, that this ambition towards ministry, the Bible says, is a noble task and therefore pursue it. And I'm like, all right. So therefore, it's okay from God's point of view for me to, to leave this and step into ministry, even with all the uncertainties. As I read the scriptures, I saw that Peter and John left their boat and followed Jesus. I'm like, okay, that's setting some kind of precedent. Then I saw that the other disciples left their, Matthew left his, um, his tax collector booth to follow Jesus. I'm like, all right. So therefore, there is precedent, there is pattern, there is principle where we can leave one thing, one career, one kind of job to pursue God. I'm like, all right. So therefore, biblically, I'm not off my mind, even though... People would say, are you, I remember one person said to me, hey, listen, you're young, you're doing well, your wife is in school. If you step into ministry at this point, you're being reckless. That same person said to me, but if it's God, then it's a beautiful thing. And so therefore, I had to come to grips with whether it's God or not, or is it recklessness, see? So not everything that is God is going to always line up with the logics of the world it has to line up with the logics of the scripture so it's all right that's good then i did number two i started to check counsel so i just okay hey you went into full-time ministry what was it like for you and people started telling me their stories and their journeys and how they stepped out in faith and as i was hearing the stories it was giving me wisdom of those who had it good bad and in the middle and it helped me to understand what to do so therefore, the first thing we have to do is inactively listen to God's voice is to check the scriptures. 
as in whatever you're trying to decide on today, get into the word of God and have the word of God speak to you. Then get God to counsel. The third thing, in, as we actively listen to God, is to silence some voices and some things and to spend some quiet time with the Lord to hear his voice. I remember for me, I had to spend a couple of days in fasting and just kind of like locked away and just spend some time just listening. Not getting too much input, but kind of like talking to the Lord and just kind of opening my heart to hear what he says. And while doing that, this divine inspiration started to come and he started to move into my soul and move upon my heart and gave me some images and some promptings about ministry. And I was like, all right, some things are lining up, going from the general to the counsel to the inspiration. And then finally, I had to be patient. I had to wait on the Lord. You see, in actively listening to the Lord, we're not going to say, God, I'm about to do this. Tell me now, or I'm going to do my own thing. We've got to be able to say, okay, God, I'm waiting on you. I'm trusting you in this direction. And for me, I had to wait for a minute saying, okay, God, I, I am willing. I am prepared. I, I know, Lord God, that this is your will. I'm ready to step into it. No, Lord, you just tell me when and I'll do it. And for me, I remember that day. It was in November um, in 1994. I was in service. It was a missions conference. They were preaching. And while they were preaching, while this point of preaching, I saw an image or a feeling of these material things just vanishing, just going. And this sense of, oh my God, I'd have nothing. And I heard the voice of the Lord in my heart say, hey, are you still willing to go even without all these things? And I responded to the Lord and stood at the end of that service to commit myself to say, you know what, I'll follow you even if all of these things are gone. And at that moment, peace rushed into my soul because I knew that I knew that I knew that this was a moment that he called. And then the journey started as we moved from that into ministry. Now, that was a very big, life-changing, career-altering move. And that's how the process worked out with hearing the Lord's voice. Now, I'm not sure what you're going through. Maybe you have to make a decision about your children. You have to make a decision about your life and your career. You're, maybe you're wondering what to do about this relationship. The same principles apply. I recall again, when I was dating Charmaine, I met my wife when I was 14 years old. She was 13. And we were friends and we hung out. By the time we were 17, we were dating. And in those days, we called it going steady. And we were at a university together. I was in social sciences doing management studies. She was in natural sciences doing biochemistry. And we just like in love. At a certain point in our journey, I had to make a decision. Like, okay, God, am I, is this, am I going to marry her? Is this the one that you have for me? You know, I thought, I want to make this decision as we're planning just our life. Is it? So again, actively looked at the scriptures. And the scriptures gives wisdom. It says, hey, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So I'm like, all right, God, that's good. Favor is coming my way. The next thing the Bible says is that we're not to be unequally yoked. And therefore, it meant that we are to find someone who has the same values, the same Christian commitment that we have to follow. And I'm like, all right, she's fully committed to the Lord. We got baptized at the same time. We're in the same kind of denomination. We think the same way. Hey, we're committed to the Lord, and therefore, we're equally yoked. I remember at about, I think we're like 18 years old, and we both wrote a covenant to God, and she signed it, and I signed it. That was one that we would tie, that we would never be unequally yoked, that we would maintain our, our purity to the Lord. And we signed it at that retreat together and said, hey, we're going to commit this to the Lord. So therefore, I, at that moment, the scripture lined up. We are suited. See? This is, he said, this is where many of us made a mistake. We go, you know what? God, is it your will? 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 And the Bible says, hey, do it this way. And you're like, I know your Bible says that, but can I do it this way? Then we're going to miss it. See, he says, he's like, why even ask me if you're making up your mind not to do it my way? And I've already told you my way, so therefore surrender to that. So therefore, that's what we had to do, and I, and I got through that. Then I went to council, spoke to some people who um, knew me, some people who knew her, who were older, and they were like, man, I can see it. 
You see, when two people come together, it's actually two families come together. And therefore, the compatibility is not only of just you and you, but also of some of your social network and your connections. Not the ones that are, you know, whimsical, but real, you know, family. And so I got counsel. Then I prayed. I fasted that day. I remember I went into the, the botanical gardens there in Jamaica and I spent the day there walking around, you know, and just praying. And then the peace came that says, hey, this is the way. And so therefore I left with confidence. And I was like, all right, cool. And therefore we, we, we pursued our relationship. And so therefore I want to encourage you today that if you are in whatever decision mode you have, if you are in that moment where you need to know which way to go, step one, actively listen to God's voice by first going to the scriptures, getting godly counsel, spending some time alone in silence, praying, and just listening, taking notes from the promptings and the, the guidance that he gives you, and then be patient for him to give you that prompt or that confirmation or that direction as you reflect on your life. Number two, for you and I to experience the direction of God in our life, for us to fulfill God's purpose for our life, not only are we to actively listen to the voice of God and his word, but number two, we have to admit dependence on God. You're like, what do you mean? Well, it means this. You got to be able to say, God, you are God and I'm not. For you to be able to be directed by God, you have to understand your role and his role. You see, often we, we treat God like a genie in a bottle or like our personal idol or our personal little spiritual power that we try to manipulate him to get our way. We're in that position, then you are God. And he's just a force that you're using to manipulate to do your will. You're like, that sounds almost like witchcraft. But can I tell you, there's a lot of Christian witchcraft going on where we try to, to dabble and invoke God to do our will, not where we submit to his will. I would recommend to you very strongly today that we have to truly abandon our will, wish, desire and say, God, I am willing to do your will. Scripture actually says that if you are willing to do his will, he will reveal to you his father. And so therefore, our best example of understanding the will of God is Jesus himself. In Luke 22, verse 42, it tells you this, the incident of, this, of the crucifixion of Christ. And before he was crucified, this is going to be a big moment for him. He goes off up to this garden and he goes to pray. His disciples were there with him because sometimes when you're praying and seeking God's will, you need some people to help you. And so he was there, hey boys, can you help me? But of course, they got tired, they got fallen asleep. In verse 41, like it said, it says, he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them. So if you picture, he says, you know what? They're there, they're praying, but I've got to take care of this alone. There are times when you've got to step away. You've got to go a little distance and that you can hear God's voice and you can deal with God yourself. And he knelt down to pray. And Jesus said these words. He says, Father, if you're willing take this cup from me he's like god i don't want to do it this is jesus speaking to him jesus says to the father he says father i don't want to do it if there's another way let's do it I, the anticipation of the agony that was coming to him he says take it from me but in that same sentence he says yet not my will but yours be done that an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And the principle there is very straightforward. Is that, look, there are times that we have to be ready to do God's will above our own. And what's even unique in terms of how this is written, when it says, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. The English uses the same word for willing and will, but it, it, if I would paraphrase it, just breaking the words up for you, it sounds something more like this. God... If you are willing, if you are willing to take this cup from me, great. But watch a sentence. He says, but not my wish, want, or desire, but that your purpose and intention be done. And so therefore, when we think of the will of God, we have to look at it in terms of what God's purpose and intention being accomplished. And that is higher. And we put it above our wish our whim and our desires 
and realize that our wishes or whims or desires are temporary. They're based on our feelings and what we're anticipating. But God's purpose and intent is so much more powerful. And if we can line up our desires with His intent and purpose, then we're going to win. See? Um, you, you, could, you could treat it like this. It's like, God, I want this, but God is what you purpose and intend. So I'm going to give up what I want to tap in to what you intend. See, many times when we are seeking God's will, the challenge that we, we face is that our wish sometimes gets in the way of God's purpose for our life. You know, it's like you come to these crossroad moments when you have to decide, God, do I do it your way or, uh, or, or do I do it my way because of what I want? I don't want the confrontation, so therefore, God, I'm afraid of that, so I'm going to avoid that and not do your will. No, we've got to be willing to do his will. And the Bible says the moment you and I surrender, I like what happened with Jesus. It says the angel strengthened him. The truth is, if you and I would just surrender to his will, then strength will come to us to do his will. The hard part is the anxiety, the stress, the pressure that comes before you make the decision. You and I have to say, you know what, God, I'm willing to do it and then just do it. So number one, actively listen to God's voice. Number two, just kind of surrender your dependence on him and say, God, your way supersedes my way. And then the Bible and shows us the pattern where the angel strengthens him to fulfill his will. I like the way Thessalonians says it. It says, I pray that God will give you strength to fulfill every desire prompted by your faith in him. Which means that if you have a, a prompting from God to do his will, strength will come to you to fulfill it. I like what the psalmist says. He says it this way. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And, I, and one of the ways I kind of consider that sometimes is that God will inspire me that his desires will fill me, that my desire will line up with his desire that I can do his will. Have you ever been there where you start to want the things that God wants? There's a time in my life when I wanted a lot of like, you know, adventure. I wanted to you know, experience all these promotions and all that stuff. And then God changed my desire to want him more, to seek his will more, to, to see the fulfillment of his kingdom on the earth more than what I wished and what I desired. And that just made a switch on my inside and allowed the Lord's purpose to be fulfilled in my life. Now what happens when we do this is that we come to a place of resolve and a place of peace and a place of confidence in our everyday living. 80 some percent of the people who work today are not satisfied in their job. There's a small percentage that actually wake up every day feeling like, you know what? I am doing what I'm born to do. Can you be in that place where you're, you have a sense that I'm in the will of God, that what I'm doing in my everyday life lines up with God's purpose for my life, and that it actually gives you just a satisfaction because you're doing what you know you're created to do. The last point I want to make is this. Not only are you to, to actively listen to God's voice, not only are you to admit and surrender to his will above yours, but number three, act quickly on what he says. I believe that you have to what is called, I call faith forward. You've got to believe God and start acting. You've got to, after you've heard what he says, you say, you know what? Because you said it, I'm going to do it. And now here is the wisdom that's going to set somebody free. And I learned this maybe late in the game. <laughs> Be driven by his direction, not by your destination. You're like, what? That goes counterculture. I know. Mm. The problem I found in my life is this. I got a sense of the dis destination, and I planned everything, and I worked towards it, and I overcame obstacles, and I thought, man, I did it. But I've come to realize that there are times when God gives you a direction to put you in a position that you can step into where he really wants you to go. He doesn't always give you the destination because he knows that sometimes we mess things up 
trying to, in our own human way, get to the destination. So what he sometimes does, he gives you a direction, and while you're in that direction, he moves you into his destination for your life. And then you're able to say to the prophets, oh, this is what God was really talking about. Because what I conceived was not really what he was. Because the truth is, we know in part and we prophesy in part. Now we see through a, a glass darkly. You know, I, I started out by talking about this guy Joseph in the Bible who had this great dream and he saw that he was going to be elevated above his family. If he was trying to manipulate it himself, he would have missed God. He went through obstacle, challenge, difficulty, prison, and then he finally got to this place where he was then in a uh, promoted position in Egypt. But yet, he was missing his purpose until God brought his family and he actually saw what his purpose was. He was promoted that they could be delivered. And the same thing for you and me. When God gives you a vision of your future, he gives you a dream, sometimes we kind of like do our human thing and try to make it work and try to get to that destination and over beat people up to get there instead of trusting the Lord instead of resting in him and allowing him to take you on that direction and not being obsessed with the destination, but instead what he has told you to do. He says, go here, then you just go here. But God, then what comes next? He's like, just trust me for this moment. And then I'll show you the rest later on. And so I encourage you to forward in faith and to trust the Lord as you move towards his destiny. The Bible says it this way. Many are the plans in a person's heart but it is a purpose of the Lord that will prevail. And my prayer for you today is that God's purpose will prevail in your life, that you would be able to hear his voice. His sheep, Jesus said, hears and discerns his voice. And maybe today you're like, I'm having the difficulty. I've been reading the scriptures, but I can't hear his voice clearly. Listen, if you are a child of God, he wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to, to be able to discern what he has to say to you. If you're not yet a child of God, if you're not in his, in his sheepfold, as it were, if you're not yet one of his, you can fix that today. And in that moment that you surrender to God, the Holy Spirit would come in and make you spiritually alive that would allow you to start to discern and to hear him spiritually and be able to hear his voice even more clearly than ever before. And so I encourage you as a first step for you is just get in relationship with God. Get in that intimate surrender relationship where he's your God and you're his child. Would you want to do that today? We have opportunities that you can even right now call on the name of the Lord and you can be saved. You can just simply turn your heart towards Jesus and say, Hey Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've been in my own path and doing it my own way. But today, I want to commit my heart to follow you. Thank you, God, for dying on the cross and being raised from the dead that you would cleanse me of all my sins and I'll follow you. Would you reach out to God even now and just make that commitment to him? Just do that transaction where God cleanses you of your sin, where he opens your, his heart to you and you to him and the Holy Spirit comes in and gives you what we call salvation which is literally a relationship with God, right? This is eternal life that you may come to know him, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. And that's what we want for you today. And then from that place, by the Holy Spirit, start reading the scriptures. Just start, start from the beginning, read the gospel of John, tap into a small group where someone would guide you through the, the scriptures and help you to walk, to understand what the Bible says, where you can get godly counsel where nobody's trying to manipulate you for their own will, but to give you what God says that you can follow him clearly and start a turnaround in your life to meet his direction. And for the believer, the disciple that you're in that kind of rut and uncertain as to what's next in your life and you, you feel out of sorts and you're grabbing onto this and that, I want to pray for you that as you would surrender and say, God, not my will, but your will be done. And I'm willing to do whatever you say that God will start to open your ears to hear his voice. And as you step towards your destiny, he, God, will direct you. Don't get obsessed with the end, but just tune into that voice that says, hey, this is the way, walk in it. Because when you do that, tell you what, you will get to your destination and God will say, hey, you are here and you will know it.
Let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that God, you would minister to your people, that God, they would hear your voice ever so clearly right now. That God, they would realize that you, the living God, loves them so much that you want them to hear your voice and you want to guide them along the path of righteousness. Thank you, God, that your direction, your leading, your word, it's like the break of the day that from you know, hour to hour it gets brighter and brighter, that you would lead them, Lord God, to see exactly what you have in store for them. So bless your people, I pray this day. Release that person from bondage right now that's stuck in that rut and allow them to step into the direction for their life in you. So we commit them to you right now. And I thank you for your word that you would just cause it to bear fruit into their lives, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold, that God it would accomplish what you send it to do. And I thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you, folks. As you continue in your day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be ever so gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, meaning may he smile upon you today and that he will give you his peace both now and forever. And we put the name of Jesus upon you today and declare that you are blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.